It's Paul Joseph Watson with Infowars.com, and I'm talking to Syrian Girl about the huge developments in the Middle East. Syrian Girl, we've got the Saudi foreign minister who came out and said that Assad will be removed by force, those were his words, if no political solution is found. They're talking about sending in ground troops. There are hundreds of thousands of Saudi troops massing. We've got armed forces from 20 different countries preparing for the biggest war games in the region ever, Northern Thunder. I mean, what's happening here? Is Saudi Arabia preparing to invade Syria? Could this be the start of a massive confrontation? Or is it all a bluff? What do you think? My feeling is that it's all a bluff. Um, it seems to be that they're using this as a negotiation tactic uh, to bring to the table. And Russia has basically called that bluff. Um, the uh, Russian Prime Minister Medvedev said that if the Saudi Arabians or the Turks send troops into Syria, this would be the spark for World War Three. This is the Russian Prime Minister saying this. And whenever I've sp spoken about this, you know, people tend to react very skeptically. But it's it's uh, the world leaders that are talking about World War Three. So the message is clear to Turkey and Saudi Arabia that um, Russia has its red lines as well. I don't feel that they would be crazy enough to cross them. This is just you know a, a, a threat. I think an empty threat. But even if Saudi Arabia sends troops into Syria. It won't change much because they already have troops in Syria. Um, we refer to it as ISIS. So I don't see how um, they're going to change anything. So um, what, what fact, message do you think they're the, trying to send with massing these troops and having these huge war games? What message are they trying to send if they're not actually planning an invasion? Well, it's just basically huffing and puffing up, isn't it? They're, uh, they're trying to say that if you don't... Uh, negotiate with us and at least meet us halfway um, on Syria, whether that mean balkanizing Syria or allowing some of their stooges into power because Saudi Arabia has its um, chosen leaders that they want to impose on Syria. You know, the democratic republic of the Saudi monarchy want to impose democracy on Syria with these select chosen people. Um, and the message is, if you don't, uh, you know, allow us to have influence, we're going to step in to defend Al-Qaeda and ISIS, because effectively that is what they are doing. Well, I think the Syrian military would be very interested to see Saudi Arabia invade, because that would be the beginning of the end of Saudi Arabia. They've got so much of their military already trying to destroy Yemen, but the um, people of Yemen are still able to stand up for themselves, and in fact, have taken over t towns inside Saudi Arabia. So I don't see uh, how far their military can succeed in Syria. I think, you know, there are some elements of the Syrian government and military that would be amused by Saudi Arabia's attempts to invade. So if you had a blunt message for Saudi Arabia, what would it be? Get rid of the Saudi monarchy. For the, to the people of Saudi Arabia, just get rid of it and rename your country. I mean, no country should be named after a person. Um, it, it is Al-Qaeda that controls the town of Azaz that um, Turkey is now defending against um, the YPG. That's what I wanted to get into now. We've got, again, Turkish officials come out and they've talked about establishing a safe zone in northern Syria for the refugees. Of course, what's really happening is then they won't allow the Kurds, as you said, to capture that strategic town near the border. But we've also got Angela Merkel now, the German chancellor, saying that a no-fly zone over Syria is necessary to, quote, alleviate the refugee crisis. What's the real agenda behind this safe zone or this no-fly zone that's being pushed by Merkel and Turkey? To perpetuate the war and to protect al-Qaeda. That is the first purpose and of course eventually to take over Syria and to balkanize the country. So um, the whole refugee thing and the human suffering is just being exploited to create more war. Let's not pretend Merkel gives a damn about human beings and refugees. If they did, they wouldn't have started this war and they wouldn't be trying to continue this war and wouldn't be trying to protect Al-Qaeda which has nested itself in Azaz 
and ISIS that has also um, taken over the borders of Azaz and, and Raqqa. And the Syrian military is now on the brink of taking back both Aleppo and Raqqa, towns which have been taken over by ISIS and Al-Qaeda. And it seems that, you know, all of the U.S. bombs didn't succeed in doing that, what the Russians and the Syrians are doing now against ISIS. Well, this is the point, isn't it? I mean, for 15 months, Obama refused to bomb the ISIS oil tankers, the transport vehicles, because of environmental concerns. Russia managed to wipe out a lot of them just in a space of a few weeks. Now we've got those uh, oil tankers that were going into Turkey from Syria, of course, controlled by ISIS. That supply line has been cut off. Turkey's obviously unhappy about that. So in summary, isn't it basically the fact that these jihadists supported by Turkey in Saudi Arabia, both ISIS and the FSA, are getting their butts kicked all over Syria now because of the Russian support in Aleppo, in Azaz, in these other places. And now they're desperately trying to rescue something from the complete failure that has been their support for these jihadist rebels in trying to overthrow Assad. It's exactly right. It's a desperation move. I mean, what they're suggesting is, is uh, ludicrous. They've been talking about buffer zones and in invasions for years, and they haven't actually done anything. It seems to be just um, desperate talk of desperate losers, basically. And yes. Do you think it's the, the beginning of the end for ISIS now they've had these strategic defeats, or will they come back later on? Is it the beginning of the end for them? Well, you know, ISIS operates under the idea that God is on their side. And if they get defeated, it's really going to obliterate that idea, isn't it? So I don't see how they can continue to gain recruits um, and maintain their you know, illusion of being so art powerful if they get defeated. I don't think they will be coming back. The I don't know how long this war is going to be. I would say there's still a lot of cleanup to do. But I would say that this is the turning point towards victory. Okay, we'll wrap it up there. Syrian Girl, I'm going to put the links to your Twitter and YouTube in the description box below. And thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.